So what is microservice architecture? In, in a layman way, if you understand, we have an entire application. The entire application is built using small, small components. Now, what if I separate these components and create for each component a small service, which is called microservice, and then I connect all these microservices together to run the whole show, to run the whole application. So that's called microservice architecture. Now, in this architecture, we have characteristics of a traditional model. So what are the characteristics of a traditional application development in SAP? So SAP systems are traditionally one large logical system. With a single database, this is what usually we have when it comes to a SAP system. So they are one large logical object with a single DB. You ensure the transaction consistency. Basically the goal of the system to ensure transactional consistency. For all the data is guaranteed. They are big systems. Yes, it's this is why they are called monolithic systems. They are infrequent releases with high risk. So usually you see that your company don't want to upgrade SAP system because there is a very high risk involved in that. So that's the another issue you will face usually with traditional SAP systems. So then it is also very hard to apply the patches and releases because they will break your custom development or vice versa. They will your custom development will break the upgrades. So this is the problem. Now, how does how does a cloud system should look like? What are the characteristics of a cloud system? So uh, they are hard to apply cloud requirements. So the traditional ERP system what you have in your company, you cannot achieve cloud requirement with them. Now they are also known as monolithic architecture. So monolithic must be built, tested, deployed and scaled as a whole. I give you one simple example. In my company, the most used transaction is VA01. VA01. The second most used is ME21N. And the third most used is BP, business partner. These are the three transactions my company use the most. But in SAP in total, there are, let's say 12,000 transactions. If my manager say Anubhav, our SAP system memory size is 100 GB. Can you allocate 30 GB to VA01, 20 GB to ME21N and 10 GB to BP and remaining remaining 40 GB to rest of the transactions which are not used much. So we get very good performance with business partner ME21N and VA01. Can you do that? Is it possible today in your SAP system that you allocate more memory, more resources to an individual SAP transaction code to run it faster and better? You cannot. You cannot. That's the problem of a monolithic architecture. In a monolithic architecture, you build the entire system as a whole, test it as a whole, deploy it as a whole, and scale it as a whole. So if you want to increase memory for one transaction, that's not possible. You have to attach memory to entire system. The entire system has to have the memory attached. That's the problem of a monolithic architecture. Now vertical scaling is limited and the cost is non-linear. So vertical scaling is very limited and cost is non-linear. You cannot say that a particular module or class or a program can run fast cannot if you want you have to attach memory allocate more computing power to the entire system to the entire hardware and then also there is no guarantee that you'll get a good performance systems are often poorly utilized like dev test non peak time so when in the night let's say you are you are indian pure indian startup you implemented sap now all the employees are working during Indian working hours in the night almost hardly one or two people are using. So in that case you have you have logged in into let's say 500 GB memory 500 GB RAM system. Now in the night nobody is using in the morning everybody is using and now since everybody is using at the same time you have to have high memory. So you attach 
let's say 500 GB more. Now you have total 1 TB memory. But in the night nobody is using. So you cannot reduce down the memory. You cannot unplug and plug the RAM at different time. So systems are poorly utilized. Whether people are using it or not using it, the systems consume the equal amount of hardware. What it intended to do. So that is another disadvantage of monolithic systems. High availability uh, availability setup require double infrastructure. So suppose you want like a fail safe mechanism. If my one system is down, I want to have another system which can take care of the work. Yes. So for that you need to double your infrastructure. You have to buy more server, more memory, more hard disk, more RAM, more motherboard. So you have to almost double your investment to basically achieve a high availability. These are the disadvantage of monolithic architecture or today's SAP systems. So what is the solution? The solution is using microservice architecture and cloud approach. So microservice architecture is an approach to develop a single application as a suit of small services. Each running in its own process and communicating with lightweight mechanism. So you will break down your entire application small small pieces. You can see this diagram. This is one microservice. This is another microservice. This is another microservice. This is another and they're communicating. These microservices are communicating with each other through lightweight mechanism often rest API. So you saw last class when we created a backing service in BTP account. It actually created a service. Yeah, a service. So this is how exactly it may look like. So you can communicate through HTTP REST service. These services are built around business capabilities and independently deployable. Yes, so they are built around business capability and independently deployable by fully automated deployment machinery. So ultimately what you do, you will have these uh, business capabilities and independently deployable and fully automated deployment. So you don't want to manually configure these uh, services in production. They are controlled by a fully automated machinery to build package and deploy them in production system accordingly. So that's a microservice architecture. So look at the advantage of this architecture now. So first advantage is each microservice runs inside a separate process or container. Last class I showed you that we have a cell in BTP cell has container and container have the processes. So each microservice run in a separate container that enables microservices to be deployed individually and frequently. So what you do, you can deploy them individually. You don't have to have tight coupling. So each microservice can be independently deployed. It can be scaled independently to varying loads. So suppose in your company you can see there are a B, C, D. So in a monolithic system, all A, B, C, D goes together. Then if you want to scale, you have to have another A, B, C, D. But you cannot say I want to scale A in alone. You cannot. That's a monolithic architecture. But in microservice architecture, everything is in independent component. So A can be scaled independently. You have four instance of A running. You have two instance of B running. You have one one instance of C and D running. Yes. So it can scale independently with varying load. Then you can use technologies and language that best fit the problem. Microservice are self contained, no shared data store. OK, they are self contained, no shared data store. So each microservice can have its own data store also. However, you can also have shared data store if you want. That is also possible. Using the right tool impact the productivity and performance. So the best part I love about microservices choice of technology. Today in ABAP, if you want to build transaction code, 10 different transaction code, all 10 we built will be with the ABAP. There is no choice of option. There's no way. There's no way. There's no choice of action actually. Yes. So that's a big problem. But when it comes to the microservice architecture, each microservice can be built with independent technology. <clears throat> Whatever best you feel from each of the technology, 
you can build microservice with that. For example, something is very good with Node.js. You can build with Node.js. Something very good with Java. You can build with Java. So each and indiv individual microservices are built using. Are built using their independent technologies. So you can build each microservice with different different technologies what you want. So let me give you an example practical example of microservice from real industry. So what happened in industry? In industry there is if you heard about Uber. How Uber changed their architecture in 2013 to microservice architecture and how did they got advantage with that? So let me explain that really quick with a practical example. What you just saw was a theory. Let's understand a practical example. So Uber earlier had this monolithic architecture. Now what are the components of a Uber? Uber application all of you used at least once to book cabs. So it has different different components. Uber have a passenger application. Then the second component is. You have the driver application. Then. You have the location. API component to deal with locations. And then they have payment gateway integration. Yes, these are the different four components. So this was one single monolithic big application Uber had. Yes, now the problem. Let's say in a city. Just think about a city. Let's say Jaipur, for example. Now this city have lot of people who want to go for travel. So let's say take an example. 1000 people. Search cab. Out of these 1000 people who search the cab, only 300 people will book the cab. They will ultimately, after searching, they book. So they check the price and you know everything, and then out of this, only 300 people book actually. Then 300 people who book, 250 cabs actually booked, and they were, they arrived. Some of them they will cancel these days. Uber is very smart. They call sir. Where do you want to go after you tell he cancel the he cancel the right, right? It happens. So then ultimately these many cab actually arrived the passenger traveled. Out of 250 people who traveled actually. Yes, so arrival will happen based on location. When you give location based on that he will come. Out of which only 100 people. Make a online payment. Yes. This is the Uber user behaviors. Yes. Now today if you look at more people are searching cab then the more people actually traveling and making online payment. Can Uber individually. Individually give this particular component high memory. And this particular component low memory. Cannot. If you think about building four transaction in SAP code. Yes, can you give this transaction code higher memory consumption so that it runs faster for users? You cannot. You have no choice to do that. That's why in year 2013. Uber changed their architecture. They come up with microservice architecture. A microservice is represented in a diagram like a polygon. This is a polygon. This is a microservice. Represented like a polygon. Like this. Now Uber have split their entire architecture in microservice architecture. So we have passenger app. We have driver app. We have location API. We have payment. 
integration we have these many components of our application this is our microservice architecture now each component first of all can be built using different technology like passenger application they want beautiful ui experience so they can use here let's say angular for location api they can use google api or google's go language for driver app they use react js or let's say sap ui5 for payment application they use java that's a first advantage each component each microservice can be built using different technology which was not possible earlier in monolithic architecture this is monolithic and this is microservice yes so now each of them can be built using different technology each of them can have different memory consumption because they are independently deployed each of them can be scale up and scale down i can say maximum number of uges will be for passenger application so i will allocate 100 gb into five instance of this application each instance have 100 gb capacity to handle the load then book for this they will actually do the booking with the driver will accept the booking so for this i'll give 50 gb with three instances of the application three parallel instances with load balancing arrival location api i just want 20 gb with the two instances of application and i want 100 gb with just one instance of payment api because it's very less how many people actually looked versus how many people actually it is just a 10% so why do i need to give so much memory for this guy i can just give 10 gb with one instance should be enough 10% of this size so this is what i can control now with the microservice architecture with the microservice architecture